you already know about the basic level shifter structure and its operation from the last episode if asked in interview about the state of art level shifters do you know their names and their operations let's talk about cross coupled bootstrap and dcvs level shifters to make you interview ready Hey guys, welcome back to the computer screen and in today's episode we are going to discuss about the below point topics. First, we will go through the level shifter philosophy. Next, we will briefly explain the clock domain crossings. Next, we will briefly explain the voltage domain crossings. Next, we will start our discussion on advanced level shifters by talking about cross coupled level shifter. Next we will talk about the bootstrap level shifter. Next we will talk about DCVS basic level shifter and in the next point we will cover the DCVS advanced level shifter. Finally we will summarize our entire discussion. We are done with this particular slide so without any further delay let's begin. Level shifter philosophy among multiple voltage domains, threshold voltages are also different. One thing I would like to say here in standard cell distribution, you will find LVT, HVT, UHVT and many type of VT that is threshold voltage variations. In order to interface between the super threshold, near threshold and sub threshold cells, appropriate level shifters must be placed. So, this kind of threshold boundaries based on the different VT dependency of the standard cells being used from all the distributions like LVT, HVT, UHVT etc. Here goes our level shifter diagram. This is the sub threshold logic circuit and this is the super threshold logic circuit and in between we have our level shifter. In between you can see that the 0.4 volt and 1.12 volt these voltages with reference to which the signal propagates is also marked in the diagram. The level shifter is required because the logic high output of the sub threshold gate does not meet the minimum logic high input of the super threshold gate. The three combinations that are required for hybrid methodology include interfacing of sub threshold to super threshold, sub threshold to near threshold and near threshold to super threshold. So when in a circuit we have multiple VTs, we will see multiple combination of the last three bullets that we have just discussed. We are done with this particular slide. So let's move on to the next slide. Clock domain crossings. Each clock domain or voltage island can be considered as individual layer block. In a modern day chip that is in a SOC, we can find multiple clock domains or we can find multiple voltage domains as we have just mentioned earlier. Here is a simple diagram with multiple flip flops and marks where this is the first clock domain owned by clock A and this is the second clock domain owned by clock B. So this way different clock domains are there in a modern day SOC and these clock domains evidently cross at some point. Number of clock or voltage domain crossings need to be minimized. Among multiple clock domains all the scan cells of same clock domain are tied together. Scan cells you can relate the cells those are used for the DFD that is designed for testability. All flops in the same clock domain are also grouped together. The number of interclock domain lockup latches are kept fixed. So we are done discussing about the clock domain crossings. Let's move on to the next slide. Voltage domain crossings. In multiple voltage island or blocks, logic level shifter is needed to calibrate the voltage change between different voltage of logic levels. Here is a brief and neat diagram of multiple voltage domain or we can call multiple power domain managed by a power management block of a modern day SOC. Here the power management block controls the power distribution among PD1, PD2 and PD3 and if any signal is traversing among the three that is PD1, PD2 and PD3 those signals have to be taken care and go through by the desired voltage level shifters. Scan chain design in DFT for multiple voltage island also raises the power sequencing issue. One solution is that power sequencing circuitry is held to the power on state during the test operation. 
Another solution is that each power sequenced island is tested independently. The combination of multiple clock domains or multiple voltage domain islands needs special consideration and attention. We are done talking on voltage domain crossings. So let's move on to the next slide. Cross couple level shifter. So far, we have discussed the different uh, theoretical backgrounds and uh, physical needs of a chip of having a level shifter to the clock domain crossings or voltage domain crossings. Now, in this slide, we will talk about the cross couple level shifter, which is an advanced level shifter in modern day IC technology. Conventional level shifters are designed using cross coupled P MOSFETs. So, here is a circuit diagram of a cross coupled level shifter. The circuit diagram is very easy to understand. There are two set of PMOS here on the right hand side column and the left hand side column. And you can see the connections very neat in this diagram. So, let's proceed on the description. The incoming low voltage signal is inverted using an inverter connected to a low voltage domain that is VDDL. Cross coupled P MOSFET transistors P1 and P2 are used to pull out to the high voltage that is VDDH. So, in this diagram, you can see clearly the VDDH and VDDL that is the high VDD and low VDD are mentioned clearly. We are done talking on cross coupled level shifter. Let's move on to the next slide. Bootstrap level shifter. So, let's explore this new kind of advanced level shifter. In bootstrapping technique, transient power is reduced during the level shifting. Let us see how in this diagram. This is also a very neat diagram and you can clearly see every active or passive devices in this circuit and their interconnections. Two boot capacitors C boot 1 and C boot 2 replace NMOS transistor to maintain the voltage difference at the gate terminals of P2 and N2. The pull down network NMOS N2 at the output stage is driven by 0 and VDDL, whereas the pull up EMOS is driven between the difference of VDDH and VDDL and the VDDH itself. Bootstrapping technique achieves lower power at the expense of significant increase in physical area due to the relatively large boot capacitors. We are done talking about the bootstrap level shifter here in this slide with a neat diagram. So let's move on to the next slide. PCVS basic level shifter. One of the famous level shifter design approach is based on differential cascade voltage switch abbreviated as DCVS level shifter. Here is a neat diagram of our DCVS basic level shifter. The input NMOS transistor are controlled by a low voltage input signals. This low voltage is shifted to a high voltage at the output of the level shifter. The DCVS level shifter operates as follows. In the beginning, in equal to 1 and in bar is equal to 0, out is equal to 1 and out bar is equal to 0. Then the transition happens as in equal to 0 and in bar is equal to 1. The NR goes off and NL goes on. PMOS PL remains at 0 voltage, maintaining PL on to resist the NL transistor by simultaneously charging node out. NR and NL is connected to the low input signal related to VDDL and operate in cutoff region. Gates of PR and PL are connected to high voltage supply. NL and NR struggle to sink more current than the PMOS pull up transistor source. If NL sinks greater current than PMOS pull up transistor source node out discharges. PR transistor toggles from off state to on state and charges node out. This cuts off pull up transistor PL completing the transition. So we are done talking about the DCVS basic level shifter. Let's move on to the next slide. DCVS advanced level shifter. Here, additional logic NRT, NLT, PRT and PLT is added over the basic structure for improved performance as you can see from the right hand side picture which is a clean and neat diagram of the advanced DCVS level shifter. NMOS, NLT and NRT are biased at a nominal voltage VDDH. Therefore, NR and NL size can be smaller than a standard level shifter. However, NL and NR should be sufficiently large to force the transition within differential structure. 
when the differential input is sufficiently shifted, the significantly stronger NLT and NRT transistors complete the transition. PMOS, PLT and PRT are controlled with the corresponding input voltage to limit the current flowing through the full voltage pull-up transistor PL or PR. PMOS, PLT and PRT are controlled with the corresponding input voltage to limit the current flowing through the full voltage pull-up transistor PL or PR. For high input, in or in bar, PLT or PRT is fully on, providing the desired charging current. PRT or PLT limits the current allowing the NMOS pull down network NR or NL and NRT and NLT to discharge the out and out bar node. So we are done talking about the DCVS advanced level shifter. Let's move on to the next slide. Summary. Let us summarize our entire discussion. A level shifter also known as voltage level translator or logic level shifter in digital electronics is a circuit used to translate signals from one logic level or voltage domain to another. It allows compatibility between different subchip blocks of IC with different voltage requirements such as TTL and CMOS. In VLSI most common logic levels have been 1.8, 3.3 and 5 volt. However, levels above and below these voltages are also used. Advanced level shifters such as cross-coupled LS, bootstrap LS and DCVS LS etc. are used as modern day level shifters. Here in this line, LS means level shifter. So, we are done with the summary. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes. Put that as in words in the comment section down below. And bye for today.